This morning, by the grace of God, we will be observing the word of God together. And uh, I believe at the end of the day, the Lord will reach out to us in Jesus' name. For some of us who may not have the opportunity of joining us for the Zona Holy Ghost service, the team for that program was Help from Above. And we minister from that topic, Help from Above. But for one reason or the other, I'll be going to the part two of that message for today. Uh, because time did not permit us to check everything as related to that topic. In fact, if we are to be going in series, it will take us time to finish this topic. But So I'll be ministering today on this topic again, Help from Above, part two. And I'm trusting God as the Lord will reach out to someone here today again in Jesus' name. Uh, our test is taken from that book of uh, Psalm 127. Because of time, I will just read that verse 1 only. Psalm 127. Say, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. And before I continue, please, if you are one of the men of vision, please make sure you wait after the service. We'll be having a meeting, and I'll also be speaking to men of vision. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Psalm 127, verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. This particular one scripture is very loaded. The version they are showing us on the screen is even telling, it says, except. This version says, unless. This, the other version says, except the Lord builds the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the law keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. I am praying for someone here in the name of Jesus. Your labor shall never be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is important for us to note that every creature needs some form of assistance. Every creature that God has created needs some forms of assistance, no matter how little or how big. And for all of us, even as human beings, we need one form of assistance, no matter how small or big. It will be an error for someone to say, I don't need help, I don't need assistance. In fact, some people they will be so full of themselves that they will be able to say, well, I don't think I need anybody. I don't think I need... Or they just look at themselves. They cannot come down to other people's level. They, they put on a kind of ego and they cannot come down to seek assistance. Before I continue, please, brethren, I need to let you know that when it comes to this area, you have to put down your ego. I remember the grace of God a day like this will not come when, I'm bold, when I can boldly say I'm graduating with something or something. If I will not put down my ego, there are times, there are some of us here that knows better than I do, that teaches me during my course of program. I won't say, we'll say I'm the power will remember be teaching a pastor. No, no, no. When it comes to that area, forget about your ego. Put your ego down. Seek for support. Seek for assistance. It, in fact, it may even be your youngest child that will put you through. Don't resist that assistance. The assistant will surely come. And God knows whosoever he may choose to use for you. You may not know why I'm saying this. But apart from that, however, all kinds of assistance man may try to get, the one from God is the greatest. And that is divine assistance. And make a prophetic declaration to someone here today in the name of Jesus. 
that surely you will receive divine assistance from God in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you will receive divine assistance from God in the mighty name of Jesus. Even though we call it divine assistance, God is the one who chooses how to manage it, how to orchestrate it. Many have lost in the battle of destiny because they trivialize matters. When God switched in, they did not recognize that it was God sending this fellow, sending that fellow on their path. And that is why you have to be very careful of relationship, how you deal with people. Prayer is good, fasting is good, all manners of things are good, but there are times God may have to choose a particular route for you, which may not make sense, but if it is God, just follow it, and you will surely get to your destination. I am praying for someone here in the name of Jesus, that you will surely get to your destination in the name of Jesus. That is why that Psalm 127, it says, Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. We check the life of, some, uh, of a particular character in the scripture and check through some things and we are close this message. The book of 1 King. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 18 to 16. This area is very important, so I will choose my time to read it. 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, that is to Elijah, Arise, go to Sarephath which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Sarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus here the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry until, they, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. That book of 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 8 to 16. The word of the Lord came to uh, Elijah, the great prophet of God. Say, arise, get thee to Sarephath. For that dwell there, behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain thee. That's why we call him unquestionable God. If God is going to take care of a great prophet like Elijah, why will he be a widow? Because God knows the end from the beginning. He knows the reason why he's sending Elijah to that widow is that there is also a need in the life of Elijah. And uh, when the need of God 
meets the need of man. When everything comes together, there will be solution. God knew ahead of time there was a particular woman that is in need of help. And guess what? That help will not ordinarily come until she does something. Nothing comes, uh, nothing goes for nothing until she does something that will provoke the blessing. So God intentionally chooses that widow. She put that widow on a glass prison to be blessed. So there was a need, a kind of duty for her to perform. The first thing that would have come to the mind of Elijah was that even if God is going to raise somebody to help me, why will it be such? Well, he knew how God operates. That God can choose anyone at any point in time. He can use the rich and he can use the poor. He can use the mighty. He can use the low. But my prayer for you is that God will raise a path of destiny for you in Jesus' name. Your help will come from God in the mighty name of Jesus. The assistance to be rendered to Elijah was divinely orchestrated. It came from unexpected quarters. That both Elijah and the widow, the two of them, are supposed to be confused about this. But when it is the ways of God are not the ways of man. If we were to be in our days, Except that man of God is hearing or deeply very well from God. He will refuse to go. You are not sending him to the millionaires in the town. So now to a widow. Not only a widow, this widow is completely wretched that by the time Elijah got there, the widow was even gathering sticks together. He was preparing for the last meal for her and her child to eat and die. So how will somebody still brings his or her own issue to such a woman? But it was divinely orchestrated. Your miracle will be divinely orchestrated in the name of Jesus. God is sovereign. The sovereign God. He can use anyone to help you irrespective of their social status or their economic status. I used to pity a lot of people even in the church. You can even be a preacher and you can be wretched if you don't know the principles of God. We have many people who will preach, give, give, give and they can, you can never get anything from their hand. We have many people in the church that say, oh, you were supposed to understand, pastor, I just don't have anything. Ah, it's zero. Zero times zero. Zero times one million. It's zero. If you like, continue to cry from today to next year. There are, there are some prayers that will never be answered by God. If you like, go and fast on the mountain. But God rules this world with principles. So God sent Elijah to Sarephat. He said, go to Sarephat and dwell there. I have prepared a widow that will take care of you. The mystery about this was that when Elijah got to the gate of the city, he obeyed obedience. In our Sunday school, we are dealing with obedience. If, in fact, it's with, if we are to be in our days, it's possible so that somebody will not even obey. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Elijah obeyed. And as he got to the gate of the city, he saw this woman quite all right. What he saw was enough to say, maybe I'm not hearing very well from God. He saw the woman quite all right. But the woman was gathering sticks to prepare the last meal for her and her child. And Elijah knew that this was the woman God was sending him to. And let's see the wisdom that Elijah uses here. 
Elijah first told this woman, he said, the Bible said, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there, gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please, bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. It's coming gradually. He said, this is it. Maybe his faith was about to be shaken. Is this one? Okay, at least water it will not be too difficult to get. So bring me a little water so that I can drink. Am I reading it again? Say, so bring me a little water, yeah, in a cup that I may drink. <laughs> the woman says, Is it water? No problem. Who is this man? A visitor asking for a water? No problem. The Bible says, and as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Bring me pounded jam. Bring me salad. Bring me jollof rice. The one you can relate to. Ah, this woman said, These people they have come again. You are not even only asking for water. Ah, let's see. So she said, she, she was so plain with the man of God. As the Lord God lives, I do not have bread. If it is water, no problem. Only a handful of flour in a bean and a little oil in a jar and see. See what I am even doing. I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. And that we may hit it and die. I make a prophetic declaration to someone. Even if you think the last resources that you think you have is the last hope you have, the Lord will give you pleasant surprises in the name of Jesus. I said the Almighty God will give you pleasant surprises in the name of Jesus. This woman was destined to die. But by obedience, God gave her life. This woman has come to the last point. But God says, you are just starting. There are some of us, please, brethren, that you told us before, he said, this brain is too, it's too small to phantom the things of God. It's too small. Let's take it for example. They say, Peter, you say, which tithes? Even the one I'm earning is not even enough to pay my bills. And somebody is talking of tithes. Or they say, go and help the less privileged. You say, no, I've not even helped the people around me not to talk of less privileged. I'm even less privileged. <laughs> so the, 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 the woman looked at the whole scenario and she told the man of God, I a condition. And the Bible said, and as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And the woman, after giving all her uh, excuses, <laughs> then the word of God, God came from Elijah. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first, God first, and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and for your son. It's not ordinarily saying it. He's backing it up with the word of God. He said, for thus hear the Lord, the God of Israel. He said, the bean of flour shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry. Until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. The man of God put zeal of approval of God unto it. He said, just go and do this. Obey. He said, just hear the Lord God of Israel. He said, the, 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 he said, the bean of flour, it shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of all run dry unto the Lord the day. The Lord sends rains on the earth. Brethren, where is your hope? Your hope is light in God. 
I think they saw him. They said, My hope is built on nothing land. Lord Jesus God. La, 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 la. Go on. Some of those songs, those people who compose it, they compose them by inspiration. There are some of us here today that God has been so merciful unto us. Wherever condition you are find yourself today is just only by his grace. Some of us will remember how where God brought you up from and how God has been keeping you and how he has been sustaining you. If you don't know any other thing, at least I can relate to myself. I remember when I came to America as I was landing in Chicago. And I check my pocket. Guess how much I brought to America? I brought $250. How is the man going to survive? Is it $250 I've been spending over the, I've been here over the past 17 years? And it's not that, there are some of you, if you cry a little bit, they will send money from you from Africa. <laughs> my own case was not like that. Instead, I have to send. God is our sufficiency. God is your support. Your help can easily come only from God. And God knows how to place you in your course of destiny and how to help you out. So the woman obeyed. And the man of God, he, he, he prophesied into her life that does hear the Lord God of Israel. The bin of flour shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her household heard for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. This woman was not going for another opinion. If it were to be in our days, if it's the pastor that is asking someone to go and prepare pandemic, they say, the sister will call another, do you know what I see today? What do you see? <laughs> and pastor say, I'm hungry. <laughs> so what is your own headache with that one? And they will be comparing notes, comparing notes, as they are comparing notes, as they are comparing notes. Phew. The fellow will just miss it. This woman, he said, if you say that is the Lord, it's up to you whether it is from the Lord or not. But it is, if it is of the Lord, that is why I will go and do what you ask me to do. Now, it's now between me and God. She refused to compare notes because she knew that the help can only come from God. And at the end of the day, to cut your story short, the Bible says she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The, so the surprise thing here was that the Bible said the bean of flour was not used up. Nor did the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. I am making a prophetic declaration to someone here today that you will receive divine assistance from God in Jesus' name. Amen. I say you will receive divine assistance from God in the name of Jesus. Amen. The question now is that how will God send a widow to feed a prophet? But the answer is not far-fetched. The Bible says trust in the Lord and seek him. The Bible says Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. The area, this area, there is a key thing you need to know here. It's not that you are daft, you have understanding. You know what economic status looks like. You know what your bank account is reading. You know the type of job you are doing. You know how much you are making. You know all the, all the bills that I have to pay. But the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not 
on your own understanding. Let's see verse 6. He said, in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. That is the provider. Is the way maker. Is all in all. Acknowledge him. When you acknowledge him, what will happen? And he shall direct your paths. I'm praying for someone here today. The Lord will direct your paths in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will direct your path in the name of Jesus. So trust in the Lord with all your hearts. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. When it comes to divine assistance from God, help from God, most of the time, it doesn't just come just like that. There will always be a test before testimony comes. God may test you with a little thing. A little thing. In actually, in most cases, pastors, they have refused to be talking about giving, giving a go because people have blackmailed churches. They will say, and hey, what you get is a gift. Brethren, let us not deceive ourselves. There are times, there are certain miracles that is not just going to come anyhow. If you like, go and begin to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Those things are good. There are some that is, the miracle is going to come by provoking the blessings of God. And if I, and if I have to be, show you examples, you will see in the scriptures. The word of God says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shall run over, shake it together. Say, shall men give unto your bosom? That is Joe told us in one of the open, open ever I read before. He said, there was a time he began to give tithes to his pastors or to people. He will, uh, all the tithe he has used. He said, there is anointing of God upon this tithe. You take this, you take this. And before he knows what is happening, he said, and people begin to give him ties, ties. Ah, he said, tie, tie. Why tie all the time? Because he was sowing ties into the life of people. And he said, well, now maybe I will change. I will begin to give shoes. Shoes is more quality than tie in terms of uh, buying it. He began to give shoes, give shoes. And he got to a point he said, he just discovered that ah, nobody is giving me shoe back. What's happening, God? And God told him, he said, the quality of your seed will determine the time it takes to, to, to ripe. That someone that plants maize today, maybe in three months, who is going to be quickly begin to get, uh, but when you are planting cocoa tree that is going to be mighty harvest later, you have to give it time. So for those of us that God is using it to give in one part, way or the other, your blessing is surely coming from God in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, so, but at a point in time, after some period of time, shoes begin to come. Shoes. He said, he said, I will still change. I will begin. He, he said, one of his best cars, one day God said, go and give it to another man of God. He said, even the driver that is driving that car cried. You know, when you are driving a good car, to let it go, you can imagine the type of car that somebody like him will be driving. So God said, go and sow this car to so so. He said, even the driver that is driving it, he find it difficult to let go. But now, in fact, he's even begging people not to bring cars to him again because it's too much. How many cars will he drive? It has become a story. You want to check from the scripture? Uh, look at uh, uh, Isaac. Uh, 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 was it uh, uh, Jacob? He was about to bless. Uh, oh, who am I saying? I, I, I'm planning to talk about oh, Jacob. J Jacob and Esau. When they are about to bless, when uh, the father uh, Isaac was about to bless Jacob and Esau, he spoke to Esau. He said. <laughs> A blessing is about to come. But it's not just going to come like that. Go and prepare meat. Cook it. Do this. Bring it. He said, let me eat. So that my soul can bless you. 
The mother overheard it uh, and quickly transferred it to Jacob. We can't blame Jacob. Jacob ran to quickly do what the father is looking for. There are some of us, it's not that we are not ready to obey, but we are sluggish in it. And when you are sluggish with it, you may never know someone might overtake you. There is overtaking the kingdom. And quickly do it and get blessed. Jacob, if the father has to bless his two children, is it compulsory to say, go and bring food? But he just wants them to do something so that the blessing can come from the heart. From the, come from him. It's easy to say God bless you, but there are some God bless you that may not go anywhere. But there are some God bless you that it comes from the, from the inner being of that man. Jacob, quickly run and do it and bring it. And the father bless him. He saw one way or the other also try to do uh, He said, well, you will also be blessed. But somebody has already gone ahead of you. They did something. The question is that even if your help will come from God, God has strategies of helping his people. What is God asking you to do? The woman with the, this widow will have missed it because she started with the complaint that, you see, I have nothing. The little I have, the little, this little, this little, this little, this little. Thank God that she, she akin to the, to the voice of God. And the Bible says, and the bean of a flower was not used up. Nor did the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. I may not know where you have been waiting on the Lord for assistance. Or where the area you need help from. God. I believe what your answer should be today is that, Lord, do it in your own way. If God will have to do it in your own way, God may ask you to go and do something that doesn't make sense. At times, it may not even be giving of money or something of that nature. God may check on your ego that maybe you are all of yourself and God still wants to humble you for one way or the other. God may say, okay, just go and begin to roll on the altar. God may say, go and help the less privileged. Or somebody is crying for help somewhere. And you know this, is, this thing is genuine. And God is saying, help him out. Help her out. And you say, no, you also have your own need. You may not know, maybe by granting access to those ones. Maybe then... Your help, own help, we come from God. Finally, also, the, this also is a life story from that Jew. He said when the church was, uh, when they just started in redemption camp, there was a time he was looking for money to do a kind of the auditorium, to expand the auditorium and do something. And one of our pastors ran to him they have just started building their own church in their own local uh, environment. And the man, that pastor, needs money to complete it. That time, maybe, when money was good, maybe 10,000 naira. And the old man of God ran to Daddy Jew. He has access to him. I say, Daddy, we have started our building of the church. And uh, this is what, if we are not going to lose the land or lose this, we need this amount of money. That you look at him that if you know my own need about the project here, you won't come here. As, as he was looking like that, God told him that. But what this man is asking for is already in your pocket. You can solve his own problem. Then leave your own problem to me. That you also first say, you first look at that person and say, what are you talking about? Don't you see... <laughs> the project here. You do you know how much we need here to you are running down here? And God say, 
you what he needs is in your pocket. Help him, then leave your own to me. Well, he said he just answer. He just okay. If that is the case, okay. How much do you say you need? So okay, take it and go. Go and settle your church. He said before he knows what is happening, help from above came. Even more than expected. I may not know who I'm talking to if you are the one that is so stingy. Not even, let's even forget about bringing money to church or giving God now. If you are the one that is so stingy to people, you may not know when God will send people on your way. And if you pass the test, that is going to lead to your promotion. But if you fail them, 100 days of fasting may not solve the problem. And the hand of the giver is always up. If you need help from above, then open your hands wide. Don't close your eyes to the needs of the people. I'm talking about genuine needs of the people because there are some that they are just they just want to find every way to scratch you and to do whatever they like. But God, if you are a man or if you, if you if you are someone of the spirit of God, if you are born of God, when there is a genuine need, you will know this is genuine. This is genuine. And you have the capacity to do this. Even though what you are thinking of using to do that, maybe you have your own need at that particular And God is saying, take care of this thing first. And trust me. Then your divine assistance will come. Your help will come from above. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. But having said all, the most important thing is that you must know that miracle worker. The one who can raise a path of destiny for you. You need to know him. You need to give your life to him. You need to surrender to him. And if you are his son, if you are his daughter, if you are his child, I want to assure you, it's just a matter of time. Your help will surely come from above. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to say to yourself that your help, my help, will come from God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. We, we will sing one song and we'll close here today. There is a song. It says, My 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 all of my my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You are going to crown to the Lord. I may not know where you need help from. Your own help may not be on financial terms. It may be over your health. It may be over one thing you are doing. It may be over your business. It may be over your immigration. It may be over. You are going to cry from unto God. Father, let my help come from you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice unto the Lord and begin to pray. Lord, let me receive divine assistance. Let me receive divine support. Let my help come from you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. I want you to cry out unto the Lord that your help will come from God. The air from God will come unto you. Your air will be divinely orchestrated. Even though it may not make sense. But God, let my help come from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let my help come from you, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
And I also want you to pray that the Lord will raise helpers of destiny for you. Because God is not going to come down physically, one way or the other. He may have to send helpers of destiny unto you. So that you will, you will not miss it on that day. He may, he may choose whosoever to help you out. When no man was to be healed, the man of God said, go and wash in River Jordan. Ah, he, said, he began to query it. Thank God a servant came to him and said, what will it cost you to just go and wash and be clean? Thank God for that servant in his life. Eventually, his God is healing. I want you to pray unto God and say, Lord, let my help come from you, O God, in the name of Jesus. Hey, let me receive divine assistance from you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Raise helpers of destiny for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Finally, we sing this song. Oh, Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider that and our God we bless your name thank you father for the revelation of your word to us Lord we ask for your mercy oh God uh, whichever area we have missed it Lord in terms of obedience Lord you will have mercy on us in the name of Jesus Amen. let our help come from you oh God in the name of Jesus Amen. Lord let there be a divine orchestration for our help from you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, demonstrate your power in our lives. Amen. See us through in the name of Jesus. Amen. As many that have been on the waiting list and they have been asking, when will it be my own turn? Father, for such, raise helpers of destiny for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let it be well with them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, blessed Father. We worship and we glorify your name. Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. thank you very much for watching that very wonderful video I hope and I know that your life has been transformed by the sermon or the ministration you just watched right now I want you to do one thing for me if you've not done it already I want you to subscribe to this YouTube platform. I want you to click on, click on notification bell so that you can get updates on when we post um, our videos. I want you to also share this video with your friends and family if you feel that someone needs it. I want you to share it to them so that you can also inspire them. I want you to also give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down in the comment section. If you've done all these things, thank you very much for doing them. And if you've not done them, please do it right now. God bless you.